tops usually look like V's, upside down V's. And even the natural gas market, do tops, long-term cyclical tops, do they look like V's, upside down V's? Is that what we would say is a long-term structural top? And I think the answer is an unequivocal no. What do we, uh, if we are good technicians, what are we supposed to call this 38.2? And I, I don't want you thinking like Colin. I want you thinking like Ray Burchette. What are we supposed to be thinking about 38.2s here? Is that indicative of a market that is trending down or indicative of a market that's asking itself, am I still a bull or am I maybe a bear? It's asking. Very good, Adam. I like that answer. It's asking. Now, keep in mind, right? I mean, traders, they're with stops and liquidity pools and all that. I mean, does this look like a mess and they go over there and then they go there and then they're over there and then they're there and then there and whatever, right? I mean, typical traders. This doesn't have to be pretty, but I think it's really important that you understand that this is not now a bear trend. This is, and what I teach in the school, and this is why I teach it, is this is what we should call the first stop. All right, and we'll put like that. First stop. Now, sadly, this might be the only stop in this, <laughs> in that it goes, down squiggly squiggly and then woohoo away we go back to the upside and remember what the typical election year looks like remember this move here yeah july august market's really happy uh about falling energy prices market believes that a top is in energy but all we're doing is the first stop and then all of a sudden a goddamn bottom comes in on the energy market and it goes screaming back up and as a result we get a big pullback here now does it not make sense in this scenario do you think that pullback right there would be a reload zone of that range there. Does that make sense? Reload zone. Ironically enough, you could make the argument, although it's not exactly the best. Uh, this pullback here is, I think, the energy markets going back up and testing those highs. And in an ideal scenario, and really this is gonna be the question for Sleepy Joe, is does the market actually stop here? If it does and it ends out and does something like that, then I think your typical decennial pivot here works. But regardless, there's going to be this pullback here. This is the DC annual report. Now let's go look at the actual election. Notice second year new Democrat president. Notice the pivot here. That's what I think we're gonna go through right now as energy prices come off. But maybe the crude oil rally or pulls back and the natural gas pulls back, it starts Wing out and it starts working its way back up. And according to this DC, uh, the, this uh, election, midterm election year study, we actually go to new lows into the election. What would cause that? Well, sadly, 
if that is the case, it's probably because energy prices actually break out through the top here into that election. I would actually argue that at that point, that's actually where your M comes in. And actually, this would be too short dated. This would be like, uh, oh, actually, yeah, let's go get rid of all this stuff. <clears throat> and we'll go like that. And we'll go like that. And like that. Right. What I think probably happens here, and this is just, of course, talking on my butt, but we'll see. Uh, we bought them. Um, uh something along these lines then we start working our way back up into that september october period we get close to the election there's the election over there and i think this thing's going to be flirting with disaster right up here now ironically enough i actually think that that's a top because the republicans are going to win and they're going to go you want oil get those <laughs> rigs going in north dakota get the uh get the fracking uh, machine going in pennsylvania again let's get make america great again let's get uh the oil drillers rocking and rolling offshore and the price collapses on the other side of that and that's what leads to the massive rally. The irony of it all is you can see that the it doesn't matter at the end of this election, the market is looking to move up smartly. And I think that's because the commodity pressure actually hits its zenith in October, November. And that's the end of the cycle. Once that's in, uh, I think this whole market takes off. Like a, you can see, into the end of the year, I think we're going to rally. Then the first quarter of next year, we should have a pullback to do things like reload zones and clean everything up. And basically, we've set the base for the next big bull market. <laughs>